Hello folks and welcome to another video I'm coming to you from my studio here in the basement and today today's video will be very minimally edited as uh, showing in a recent poll from you guys that you wanted uh, more videos more frequently and just a lot less edits. It takes a long time to edit these videos so I'm going to take some minimal time in doing that but today's topic is all about how to navigate the Helix LT from Line 6 just some basic navigation things functions and things like that to get you up and running so don't panic don't worry about it if you have a helix lt or a helix it, it may seem overwhelming i'm just going to help you and encourage you today don't worry about that i'll take you right through those steps as we get started i've had some good success with some previous videos regarding some gear overviews and things like that you can check out some of those videos my pv viper video also had uh, i think some 11 rack videos as well as some other overview videos on different other kind of gear and uh, demo pedals and things like that, how to use those. So, and Digitech RP355 comes to mind as well. So you can check those out. A lot of good feedback on those. So I thought, well, why not just do one with one of the most popular models, modelers on the planet right now? And that is the Line 6 Helix line, specifically the one that I bought, the Helix LT. So without further ado, let's get on into that. If you like this video, please give it a like thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of when these videos release thanks so much let's get on with it all right so here we have the line 6 helix lt up for you and we're going to go ahead and get it running the first thing you want to do obviously is just go ahead and power it on I've, the only connections i have right now are the actual output going to my audio interface and that's what this cable is i had to unhook it earlier for the uh the microphone to work that i'm talking into but that's going from the output the mono channel the left channel into my audio interface i've got the guitar input over here and then here i've got the usb out to my computer but the power cable is right here we're just going to turn that on and get that up and running you can see as it's powering on so the first thing you see, I do believe, when you when you come up is going to be the preset mode, okay? So we're going to start with that. But first, what I want to kind of encourage you here, here's some tips that I've got, how to overcome buyer's or slash player's remorse, okay? Go ahead and switch cameras there so I can get a feel for what's going on. So you, you might be saying, oh my goodness, what have I done? I bought this huge piece of equipment now, I don't even know how to operate it, okay? So... What we want to do is overcome that buyer's remorse. With me, I had that kind of feeling. I thought, well, is this going to live up to so-and-so modeler that I had before? In my case, it was the 11 rack, which is a good modeler. It still sounds amazing. I still have it and it still sounds amazing. I'm still going to be using it. But uh, what the first thing you need to do is just don't panic, okay? Do not panic. Don't worry about it. Um, for me, I had a little bit of panic and everything. It was, it was on sale, but even then it was still a pretty good price to pay for this unit. But I, as I'm studying it and getting in more in depth of it, I understand why it's such a, a big price tag because it has so many features, it does so many things, and it will do so many things for your playing, especially if you're playing live. Tons of you know opportunities and options for ins and outs and things like that. Now, while this isn't the regular Helix, I'm assuming that a lot of this stuff works the same way because the unit is pretty much the same, almost the same size, even though it doesn't have scribble strips, scribble strips and you know, other knobs and, and all the ins and outs and everything like that, it still should operate the same way. Okay, so there's that caveat. So don't panic, get to know your unit. Now for me, all these come with a cheat sheet, okay? That's this thing. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of bubbles on this. I tried to laminate this and it didn't turn out okay. Okay, so I had to actually email them and have them give me another one. And they, gave, they sent me one free of charge. Okay, so they were really good about that. They had an extra uh, spare waiting on me so but i can still see it you know as long as it's not under the, underneath the glare or anything like that so you could see this cheat sheet it comes with this all right so i would get to know your line six unit by studying this cheat sheet okay get to know it don't panic just get to know it they say i think i've read somewhere that um if you memorize this sheet if you kind of look this over you'll understand 90 percent of how to operate the helix okay so definitely priority number one do not panic don't go ballistic and go crazy. Study the cheat sheet, okay? I also recommend studying the manual. With me, I took my time. That's another point. Take your time. Don't feel rushed. Don't order this if you want to gig this weekend, okay? 
take your time. Give it a month in advance or several weeks in advance. With me, I was in no hurry. I was in no rush. I didn't want to rush the process. I wanted to get to know this unit, okay? Much as the, the way I did with my 11 rack, I wanted to get to know this unit so that I could learn the ins and outs of it. The majority of your ability to play and function on a unit like this is your knowledge of it and your intimacy with knowing how it works, knowing all the shortcuts, all the different things like that that you need at the time. Now don't, don't feel worried, the manual, as it gets to about page 50 in the manual, user manual, it starts getting a little more complex. Don't worry about the stuff that's complex right now, okay? Just learn what you need to know for when you need to know it, all right? One thing that's a different about the Helix here that you can see is it doesn't look like an amp head. At least with the 11 rack, it looks kind of like an amp. You've got knobs that you can turn that correspond with an amp. You can turn the gain up, you can turn uh, all the different parameters and different things like that. It, this doesn't look so much like an amp head. It looks more like a floor unit, which is what it's designed for. They have a rack version. I'm not exactly sure how that looks, but there's some things about it that do kind of remind you of an amp. For example, these knobs here, if I go back to the preset that I was on, uh, these knobs here correspond to what your parameters are here. So if I go to the amp and I wanna change some amp settings, here's all my amp settings, okay? So you can do that. You can, you can see it that way. You have a master volume over here that you can turn up. For the most part, the rest of this is just different buttons and things like that. We'll cover that in just a, a little bit. Another point that I had that I noticed that I was starting to panic, okay? So here's another panic point you want to be aware of. When I started playing around with this in my living room upstairs, I put it through headphones and I was listening at it through headphones and it seemed like to me, I don't know if there's a setting that you can, um, some kind of a master setting that you can change to change the way it sounds, except for the global EQ, which I'll get to here in a minute, but it sounded a little too dark. It sounded a little too maybe low uh, bass heavy. I couldn't get that out of there, so I'm starting to panic. It's not gonna sound as good as my 11 rack. It's not gonna sound as good as my signature sound that I like, that I wanna recreate in this thing. But when I got it downstairs on my main monitoring system, everything changed. It sounded bright, it sounded nice and crisp and clean and clear, and so a big sigh of relief happened when I realized that my headphones is not gonna sound the same as my actual monitoring setup down here in my studio. In fact, Jason Sadites, I think that's how you pronounce his name, he's a real big Helix video guy, and he has got some a great video on monitoring and how important it is in your Helix. And I'll try to link to that or throw a card or something like that in this video. So we've got that. Don't panic if you hear the headphones and you think, oh, this is going to be terrible. Get it on your actual studio system. See what it sounds like, and then see if you can go from there, okay? So the other thing was on the headphones, let me get my phone on silent here. I'm starting to get a lot of notifications. So with the headphones with me, like I said, it ended up being too dark. So what you can do is you can go change the global EQ. And for me, that was what you would usually do. I've heard a lot of, of people saying that you want to change the global EQ, not for every setting, but like if you get to a different venue and the sounds are a little different than what you're used to in your studio and you want to change the overall scope of all your tones okay that's what the global eq is for to access that we're going to go into the settings button here we'll talk about these buttons here a little bit and you can see there's a global eq right here all right global eq and then you can adjust all your different gains okay you can turn it on you can turn it off and when you turn it on there's a little global eq button up here that shows that it's on all your settings so if i back out of this go back to my view you can see it right there, all right? Now, I was about to worry about touching this. This is not touch screen, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's, in, in my case, that's a good feature. So if I go back to the settings, Global EQ, I can turn that back off, and I can go over here, page over. You can see this little scroll bar, it moves around, and I can uh, get all these other EQ frequencies and things like that. So we don't need that for now. All right, so if I go back to my main view, go back to that view for now, so adjust any kind of sounds when you're on your headphones with your global EQ, and you can always bypass it and disable it. There's a shortcut on how to do that, and I can't remember if it's action and amp or whatever it is, but you have to read the manual for that. There's a shortcut on how to get it to come up without having to go to the settings all the time. Okay, point number four on this, I think we're up to number four. We talked about how it navigates mainly using buttons and knobs, unlike a computer software modeler. So in the, in the sense of computer software modelers, it's real easy to take the mouse and move things around. I love taking the mouse and tweaking things and different things like that. This doesn't have a mouse. So it kind of feels like the old, in a, in a sense, it feels like the old computers where you had to issue commands 
and different things like that because you can't just take a mouse or you can't take your finger touch screen it move this over like some modelers do okay so that's the basics that's the kind of intro on this you don't want to worry about um panicking okay get to know your helix number one get to know your helix use the manual use the cheat sheet whatever you got to do get to know it and you can probably see kitty back here in the background making a, a ruckus all right so next part let's go ahead and get started with the get started portion and we'll actually deep dive into how this thing works and how to navigate it very simply if you're a beginner just starting out all right to get started number one what we want to do is we want to read the manual we already talked about that but the other thing you want to do is just start tweaking start experimenting start working on the different aspects of your helix okay so just demo the presets like i said when you first start this up if you're a first user now there's other videos on how to do this but what you want to do is you want to update the firmware get the latest version of the line 6 updater and hx edit okay those are free to download you can get those get those versions update your unit uh, as you may have saw earlier this thing was on i think firmware 3.1 okay that's the latest as of this videotaping so when you first get this you'll see the presets okay all you have to do is just start scrolling through the presets okay now what we need to do is kind of get familiar with some of these buttons all right now we'll get some we'll get familiar with that here in just a little bit but to access these to get to get to them this is a joystick okay so you can go forward backward down up okay you see how that changes up here if i go all the way to this side i've got all these different folders i can use these folders are called set lists okay there's like 30 something in each set list okay so you got a, hun a ton like over a thousand i think presets that you can work with so we can go to factory one scroll over go within the folder and you can start scrolling and all you don't have to keep pressing down took me a little while to realize this but you can actually turn this knob and it turns the preset okay it goes to the different preset and it's live whatever you land on is live you can start playing immediately and get an idea for what it sounds like okay so let's see i locked this solo lead overdrive okay okay great now what do i do how do i get out of this so i can see what i've got it's easy there's a button here called view and this is your master view button okay so you can view that and you can always go to your layout by pressing the view button and you can also if you press it again you can see your snapshots or however you've got things set up i've got for right now i've got things set up as snapshots on the bottom row stomp boxes on the top row okay so you can see that and you can go that way um the other way if you want to see your presets another way to lo to navigate those is not just through the up and down here but these buttons here it goes to my different presets like i said i've got it set to on the bottom i can navigate those presets if i want to go to the next one we go to five we go to six when it originally starts you're going to have all these banks as six seven and then eight nine you're gonna have all of them filled up so you can see all those so we can go select our preset from here okay let's say i didn't want to do that i want to back out well i'll just go back to my view and i'm where i'm at i don't I haven't changed anything okay so view will show you the different layouts of what you've got okay now once again it's, it's, it thinks that i've got one so if i step on something it will be there so let's go back to 4d where we're at and just select there now we're here okay i can also see the mode if I hit the mode button here, I can see my stomp boxes, okay? So I've got snapshots, or down here, this one particularly is have stomp boxes as well. I can actually move the stomp boxes up if I want to. I can reassign those later if I want to do that. But for now, we're just gonna keep it as it is, go back to preset mode or snapshot in this case. Okay, so now we can see everything with the view button, all right? So to access your presets, you go back to preset and press the button like this or if we go back to view we can actually start turning and it switches our presets this knob turns away it doesn't go back and forth like the joystick does you can see the arrows here that it points that it goes in a different direction this one is either press or turn okay so I'm getting kind of ahead of myself demo those presets and just study them it one of the best ways to learn how to navigate this thing and how it works is to study what they've got going on okay you can also, what I did, I watched a few beginner videos on how to navigate the Helix. Okay, so I watched some of those, got familiar with it, got an idea of what it's, what it, the basics were of how to, to navigate that. This is one of those videos, but there's also more out there, no doubt. You can find some other ones. There's some really good videos 
on Helix on how to navigate it. Uh, now the Helix LT I think came out in 2017. There's plenty of videos to do that with as well. All right, so play with it yourself. You can only watch so many videos before you have to actually sit down and tweak the knobs yourself. Just have fun tweaking them. Have fun experimenting with them, okay? Now that's the getting started portion. Let's move on to the actual basic navigation, which is what I've kind of teased here when pushing all these buttons. Let's move on to that section so we can actually get hands on and see what's going on with our Helix. Okay, so now let's get hands on with the Helix. Like I said, when you first get the Helix, or the Helix LT in this case, it starts with presets, all right? These are all your different set lists. To navigate those, we've got the joystick. We already talked about that. I can go over and find a different preset. Let's say I want to go to factory two presets. There's two different factory presets that have already been pre-programmed. Some of these artists, some of these are just presets that the Line 6 crew have created on their own. And also another thing about don't panic. I've heard a lot of videos saying that your presets are not gonna be top of the line presets. In, in other words, this thing has the ability to give you great, amazing tones. But out of the box, the presets are meh, you know, kind of like that. You'll have to tweak and experiment to get the sound you want, okay? And if you don't understand how to tweak tones, you can always go online and look at some videos on how to dial in tones. But once again, Jason Sadites has a really good videos on how to dial in different tones. And I think it's one, one of his series is called Dialing In So-and-So, all right? So that's a factory uh, number two. I can go back to get to the folder structure. Come down here, I've got user folder one, user two, user three, user four, user five. All these right now are new presets, they're empty, okay? I've only created two presets of my own, and that is my signature SLO, or my Soldano sound, and this is the ones I was trying to replicate with uh, the 11 rack. It didn't work out so good, but uh, I think I finally landed on my signature tone. I may make a video on that, or just go ahead and get the presets ready for you guys to download. But anyway, I've only created two presets of my own. Now, the cool thing is you can actually go back to presets that are made and save those. In, in this case, if I scroll down, I think I did, yes, I saved one of the presets that was already set up in here. It was called For the Love of Steve. Steve Vi for the love of God, For the Love of Steve. So I went ahead and put it here in bank number four. I could have put it in 4D because that's what it says, but I just went ahead and put it in bank four for future reference. I could save that, put it somewhere else if I need to, okay? So you can navigate all these and go to the template. I even have a templates section, okay? One of the best ways to get started is the template section, and here's why, all right? So if we go here, we navigate to the very first one, it says quick start. We start with that template, and to select that template, this is your kind of like your enter button, your select button. So you hit that button and you start it, and now we've got some basic parameters to start out with. Once again, preset, it goes to your presets. You can go over here and navigate all the way down with the joystick to the templates, push over to go inside the folder, quick start's the one you want, press enter or press the joystick and it will get you there, okay? So, keep in mind, these two buttons are easy to get confused. You have preset and joystick. A lot of times I was turning the joystick when I meant to turn the preset, and what that does is it turns different models of whatever you have selected. So if I turn this button, it's gonna select a different amp and cabinet, okay? So that's not what I wanted. So when we go, to go, go back to that, I can go to, let's say I can go to a different preset, and then come back and that resets it and I can go right back to it. And now we're back to what we had, okay? So it starts out with just some basic things that you have. To scroll over, you can kind of see, this is highlighted because it's white. We can see that those are now highlighted. I can see I've got a volume pedal, I've got a wah pedal that's not engaged right now, it's kind of grayed out. I can add another block here. I've got a amp and a cab. If you notice, you probably can't see that, but there's a little speaker here. If I would use the page buttons, let's go ahead and talk about those now page buttons show you different parameters in whatever effect or amp or whatever it is you have selected or it could be even the settings you can different see the different pages and here's how to see that there's a little red line here it'll be a different color depending on what effect you have or whatever but if there's space after that then that lets me know there's another page you can watch that scroll bar shift okay so now I've got all three pages I've got of these settings now the first two pages are for my amp, okay? You notice here's an amp icon, first two pages are for that. It switches to the cab once I go here. All right, and that is one of the ways that you can have an amp. You can have a preamp, you can have an amp without a cab, 
or you can have an amp cab combo. That's what this is. You can also have dual cab setups. And we'll probably go into that here in just a little bit. But anyway, so we scroll over some more. It says we've got a reverb here. We've got pages of stuff here as well we can change. We just go over until that scroll bar reaches the end. And that lets us know what's going on. And then at the end, it's got a looper function, a six switch looper that we can kind of mess with on that. Now I haven't got into the looper myself, so I can't really give you any ideas on that. This is just some basic layout stuff, okay? So once again, that template is number one, quick start. From here, this is one of the best places to start tweaking. You can just start messing around, changing reverbs, changing you know the different effects and everything like that. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the way to access these, if we go to a different block, is we use the joystick again, okay? So the joystick automatically pulls up all my different amps, my reverbs, I can use this to scroll. We've got delay, reverbs, pitch, wall, filter. Here's an amp plus cab combo, which we had. You have just the amp by itself if you want to feed out to your own cabinet. There's also a preamp that you can use, uh, maybe to go out to your own amp. I don't know exactly how I would use that, but there's also just a cab version here, and you can make it a dual cab. If I scroll over, just like the folder, think of these as individual folders. You can scroll over, and now you have something else. There's a single, and there's also a dual cab. It's out, it's uh, grayed out right now because we're using too much DSP to be able to select a dual cab, but that's fine. So if I go to single, over here, I've got all these different cabs I can go to immediately, all these different cabs, okay? I can also scroll back, and now I have an impulse response that I can use right now. The only one I have loaded, because I want to get to know the cab, that's another thing. Get to know your cabs, tweak with them, experiment with them, so you can understand how they work rather than trying to dive into the mad abyss of impulse responses the only impulse response that i have loaded right now is the email sound labs best ir in the world okay so that's it i don't want to fool with a lot of irs i know that ron bumblefoot foul uses this ir he actually uses the cabs but he sums the cabs up to uh, an ir and that's the one he uses if it's good enough for him it's good enough for me. I'll just start with one if I want to experiment and then I can tweak these different settings here. Now, once again, this whole scroll bar is solid, so there's no different pages for that unit, okay? So let's back out of that and the way to back out. Do uh, you also have these other effects as well? The looper being the last one. Anything that's grayed out means that you've used too many DSP, too much DSP to be able to use it. So let's back out, we go to view. Okay, well, I've got an hour there. If I don't want that, here's the next button we're gonna talk about, the action button. With this button, if you select it, notice it kind of like pops it up. Let me do that again. Picks it up, puts it down. Let's say I wanted to move that after the cab. So we got an hour, we pick it up, we scroll over, we move it where we want it. And it can be right after the cab, it can be later on the signal. Notice they've got space in this chain because if you think you're gonna be adding effects before the amp, well, it's best to put the amp like somewhere in the middle and then the cab after that, and then you've got space for reverb and different things like that, okay? So I don't want this, so this action gives me different uh, assignments. Now I'm gonna go over these, but I'm gonna tell you the one that I was gonna use here. That is clear the block, okay? So I can clear that out. Uh, I can add that to my favorites list if I wanna do that, so that I can access my favorites, and I'll show you how to get to that in a minute, and all these other things you can kinda read upon, all right? So we can clear that block, we don't need it. So if I go back and highlight a block here that's empty and hit this, there's my favorites okay so if i go down to my favorites it's already selected because it's or no it's not selected anything that's bold face is selected so i'll go over and now i can see some of these different things that i found within other presets that i decided to add to favorites because they sounded so good so that's another good way start adding preset effects to your favorites and they will usually when they're when they're like this they will show up as whatever settings you tweak them as before you save them as a favorite so they will be able to place in the block as what you save them as okay Hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. All right, so that's my action button. I can do all these different things within there. Okay, so experiment with these buttons. You're not gonna break the unit, you know, if you if you, you mess with these buttons. Don't worry about that. Okay, so let's go back to our view. And I think it added an EQ and I don't want that. So I'm gonna select action, clear that block. Okay, now if you wanna start from scratch, you can select action, clear all blocks. We don't wanna do that right now. So we'll get back on the action, okay? So we've talked about pages. We've talked about a joystick. We've talked about bypass or the action. Now, the bypass button, obviously, if you don't want something to show up in the, in the unit and you don't have it assigned to a foot switch yet, you can bypass that and it grays it out. You can't really see it. The color's gone. It's just a, just an icon now, a grayed out icon. Turn it back on, bypass. Simple as that. 
Okay. So next, let's talk about this button. Okay, this button is the amp button. At any point in time, let's say we're down here and it's gonna take a long time of scrolling to get to your amp. Well, not anymore. All you have to do is press this and it goes immediately to your amp. And if there's multiple instances of amps, you hit it multiple times and it goes to each instance. That saves you so much time. Usually I found that when a preset loads, if I go back to a different preset here, let's just go to one of the factory ones, just a random, we'll start with the first one here. It usually almost always defaults to showing the amp first. Okay, so you can automatically dial in your tone for the amp because that's kind of your main, where your main tone comes from. So it's gonna start with the amp setting, every preset. So if I go to a different preset, it's gonna start with an amp. The amp's gonna be highlighted. No matter where I go, they usually highlight the amp. That's one thing I've noticed. Okay, so, and the amp is kind of a central. So the thing about that is it's easy to navigate. If I need to get to this side, it's only three steps away. This side, it's only three or four steps away. Okay, so that makes for easy navigation as well. Or if you're down here, like I said, and you want to get to the reverb, why spend all that time clicking when you can go click, one, two, three, and you're done. Okay. Another tip on navigating, I didn't notice this until early or until I started messing with it. This is why it's so important to mess with your unit, is that instead of scrolling all the way back to get to that volume knob or that wire, whatever this is, all I have to do is go over and it circles back around, just like that. Mind blown, right? I've never seen that. You heard it here first. I've never seen anybody talk about that on all the Helix videos I've watched. So you can, and the same works for up and down. Not that you would really need to do that because all you have to do is one click to go down. But if I want to go back up, I can press down and it takes me back up, okay? So you can work on that. Now, let's just get an idea of the other things. We talked about these effects and you'll get to learn what the icons mean. Once again, you study your cheat sheet that they give you. Hopefully you can see this. It shows you what every instance of every icon means, what it looks like. And it will take you no time. Trust me, it will take you no time to memorize that. And every time you see that same icon, it's the same thing. I know that's a distortion. That's a delay. That's a modulation of some kind. A, a amp by itself, a cabinet, because it's a speaker. A reverb, because it's like a box that reverberates. Volume or gain, wah. I mean, it just instantly recalls to my mind what these are, okay? The other thing to be aware of is your inputs, okay, and your outputs. And when I mentioned DSP earlier, each one of these lines represents a DSP block. There are two DSP blocks in this unit, okay? Each one of these lines represents one. If you find an area that's grayed out, let's say I wanted to add another effect here somewhere, and I wanted, let's say I could make it a different distortion. I'll go to something that does take a lot of DSP, and that is simply pitch. A lot of these are grayed out because they take a lot of DSP. It takes a lot of DSP and resources to make different pitches and make them sound accurate, okay? So that's one thing to be aware of is it's grayed out because of that. So the DSP now has been used up too much for me to do this. What I'll have to do is either move some effects using that action clear block or change some effects. Some effects are really DSP intensive. Some effects are not. Some are very low DSP load. And one of those is EQ. It doesn't take a lot of DSP to use an EQ. So you can kind of budget your DSP in that sense. All right. So if I go back, it's already changed this to something else, which is fine. I can get back out of that come back and now it's whatever it was before. I think I've changed my setting here, but anyway, I think it was 1A we were on. Let's go back to 1A. And once again, I'm tw uh, twirling the preset to get there. All right, so inputs is all the way to the left. Shows what's going on here. You go all the way to the right. I'm not gonna scroll, I'm just gonna scroll back one. This allows you to uh, tell your output where it needs to go. Okay, so I can tell it to come down here if I want to. I can change that by scrolling, okay? All right, so uh, output is just going straight to, um, it doesn't go to this next box, but it goes straight out the computer. I can actually use this for something else if I need to, but you can change that type by, once again, scrolling here. And we have, once again, a scroll bar that gives me multiple pages of this one particular type of output. I can scroll it, and what this does is now, let's say I've got too much DSP, I need some more room. I've now transferred this come down here and now we've got another line another line full of DSP P that we can put blocks in some things that uh, some people do we'll put our cabinet way down here so that you can put a lot of stuff in between the cabinet and then some stuff after the cabinet between the amp and the cabinet so 
just because it's on a different line doesn't mean that it's it, it's it's just weird. Think of this as one huge continuous line now. I've got this whole chain that's what how many blocks we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen blocks long. Think of a pedal board that's sixteen pedals long. That's what you have now when you change that input to that arrow. Okay. Path two. This is path one, this is path two. This is one A, two A. Why is it A? Well, because if we go back down here and we take an action. Let's just go somewhere else. Let's go here in modulation. We take an action and then notice it has a little, if you can see that, a little dotted line here that's grayed out. If I take and push this down, now I have split the signal, okay? So the signal goes out from the amp to the reverb and out. But we want this to kind of the reverb, or not the reverb, the modulation. We want it to come before the cab. Let's just say for some instance we did. All we have to do is press action to get out of that mode, go up, and what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the actual merge. This is a split path. We can highlight that and change some different parameters of that. And then we can highlight the actual merge path. Hit action. It picks that up. I can move it over. Now it's going to be this by itself is in its own little split. And then we have things coming after it. So it comes out from path A, 1A to 1B, back into 1A, and then feeds back out to wherever I send it. Okay. A lot of different things that, that, to, to cover on this. This is why I said you definitely need to spend time tweaking it and learning it, okay? So what have not we covered? For one thing, we can save. Now, here's a good example. Let's say I like this preset. Let's just go to a different preset. One of them that I did like, and I had it earlier, was a Cali Rectifier. Let's say I like this preset, okay? So I want to save it in one of my preset banks. So let's go ahead and push save. This is how you save all your presets. You can save it. Here you can rename it using these the different knobs, and I think this is, you can change and scroll over and change and do all that. We can rename it, but what you can do is you select the destination. So the destination that I want it to be in is not factory. Let's go to set list. Now this is, this is your folder. So I want to go to user one. Now let's set the destination to two. I don't have anything on two, so I'm gonna put it on two A. It's a new preset. Also. You'll notice if, you've, if you're overriding one, it'll have the name of your preset. So we've got a different destination here. I'm gonna put it on the two. Actually, let's put it on four because that's where I started my other preset. So that was 4A for the love of Steve. Now let's go to 4B Cali Rectifier, okay? So I like that. I'm gonna keep it the same name. That way I know it's a factory preset and I'll, I'll need to tweak it. If I tweak it later, I'll name it something else. Click the save button and bam, I can go back that at any time. I go over here, my user is in 4B, okay? If I scroll up, there's my For the Love of Steve, and I scroll down as my Cali Rectifier. I select that using that button. Like I said, these two buttons get confusing. If I wanted to select that with a preset, it may or may not work. I don't know exactly. Let's see if uh, I think that works. That exits out too. But anyway, so you've got your save. The other thing to look at is your hamburger uh, settings icon, they call it, because it's three layers. So this is your, basically your, preferences and your settings over the whole unit, the global unit, all right? So you have your global EQ, you got the command center, which uh, has a lot to do with assigning foot switches. Controller assign has a lot to do with that, expression pedal foot switches. Uh, your bypass assign, your global EQ, which we talked about, and your global settings. So anything that applies to the complete unit all together. So this is your settings, your preferences, all this stuff can be found by navigating, once again, with the scroll bar here, the scroll knob and you can access all these different things. Now, as you read the manual, become more, more familiar with it, you will understand exactly how to assign foot switches and things like that. We're gonna exit out of that for now, go back to presets, go to view, and let me show you real quick how to assign some of these, all right? I'm not gonna go into snapshots and things like that because that's a whole nother video, it's a whole nother video in itself. We're just doing basics here, but what I wanna do is, one thing you must remember with the Helix units is these foot switches you don't only press these, you can actually touch them and it, they are touch sensitive, okay? So we don't have a touch screen, but we have touch foot switches, okay? So let's touch a foot switch. Let's say I wanted to assign my distortion pedal, okay? So let's say I wanted to assign it right here on B. All I have to do is touch that, bypass assign. Do you want this to, to be to that selected bar here? Touch and hold, thumbs up. Yeah, assign it to there. Bingo, now I've got it on and off, okay? That's the latching type. Let's say I wanted to, let's say I had a pitch effect, okay? So let's go in here, add just a simple pitch effect. I've seen some of these pedals where you, you hit it once 
and it gives you a pitch effect. You can press and hold and then you can release and it's off. You press it and it's on, you release and it's off. Okay, let's just say we got a pitch whammy, that's what we want. And what I'm gonna do is assign that to now C and also want it to be momentary. So I'll say okay. So now it's on when I press it, it's off when I release it. Oh wee, oh wee, oh. Oh wee, oh wee, oh. You know, whatever I wanna do, that's the way to do it. That's momentary latching is on and off, okay? So now that was, the sign was taken away from my distortion because I actually changed the pedal, all right? So now that's an assignment gone and now it's over here. So, but it, there's a lot of things that's potential whenever you press and hold and you can do all these different things to happen, all right? You can have all these things different happen. And all these, once again, these are the knobs to switch your parameters. You got pages and different things like that. That is what I would consider in my aspect, in my opinion, the basics. Now, you've got your expression pedal. It has a toe switch, so you press on it, automatically it becomes a wall. I think expression two is always volume, expression one is always wall. You also have an outlet if you need to use an external effects unit as well. Okay, so we have the control panel we went over, all these different buttons. The master volume, I just leave it cranked. That's what I've heard people doing, and that's what I'm doing. You can set it on your DAW or whatever, on your input, the level and everything to make sure it's right. And then we have the foot switches, okay? So, with that in mind, let's go and talk about some a few more tips before we close this thing out. All right, so let's do a few closing uh, ideas and tips before we close the video out, all right? So, I, I was using some terminology that we kind of want to go over just a little bit here. And that is set lists, presets, snapshots. These are three different ways of kind of viewing it. Your set lists is your folder view, okay? It's just a very small folder view that you start with. Presets are those 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B, etc. Those are the actual presets, okay? We talked about switching the different presets. One other thing that I will say is if you engage the foot switches that are, uh, I don't have this on screen because I'm not recording it, but if you engage the foot switches, the preset up and down arrows to the far left, you press both of those at the same time, that will put you in snapshot mode, okay? If you want to get to the snapshots, that's how you do it. I may do a whole other video on snapshots because it's, like I said, it's another video worth of uh, information. Snapshots, the way that works is, in a nutshell, in that same preset, you can turn on and off certain effects that you want or don't want to have working, okay? So let's say I had a distortion that I like, but I want it on the lead channel. So I would save snapshot one as my clean channel. Snapshot two, I would go to that and I would enable the distortion. And so now snapshot two is more of a lead or rhythm. And let's say I wanted to switch to a completely different amp or a, a dirty version of that rather than a clean version. Then I can go to snapshot three, assign that amp to switch if I want to, and then save that to that snapshot. So whatever you enable or disable on snapshot will stay there. When you get to the next snapshot, those different parameters will change. So it's the same preset, but all your different blocks, you can activate or have different things happen. Different parameters do different things on each snapshot. Like I said, I'm probably gonna make a video now that I think about how difficult that is to understand on how to do that. So maybe we'll see that coming pretty soon. All right, so snapshots eliminate. Now, the good thing about snapshots is it eliminates what's called preset spillover. You don't have to worry about enabling preset spillover. I think that's in the global settings, but preset spillover in a nutshell is whenever you switch to your different um, presets, let's say if we've got the bank loaded and I want to switch to that, there's going to be a little bit of a, a gap. When you hit that note, there's going to be some latency there. Nobody likes that, right? So what we've what they've done to eliminate that is allow snapshots because it doesn't use any DSP. It doesn't use any other resources to enable it or disable an effect or an amp or whatever you have. So a snapshot is a preset within a preset. You've got that preset set up to function in different ways, so to speak, okay? If you still want that preset spill over, you can do that, but keep in mind, it will eliminate one full DSP block, okay? The whole DSP line will be gone. You'll only see one line. Uh, other videos, they can show you how to do a total of four. You can actually split all those and have separate inputs for four different lanes. You're still using two DSPs, but you can separate those into four different lanes. You can look that up somewhere else. That's Once again, that's a, too much to cover in this video, but just keep in mind, if you do enable preset spillover, you'll lose a DSP block. So what you, I recommend you do is you have all your effects that you need I think it's on path one, the very top path. 
because path two is what is, is what's removed. So your the, the effects that you absolutely need, keep them on path one and use path two for some effects that you wouldn't miss too much if you had to disable that DSP by the use of preset spillover. The signal flow layout, we've kind of talked about that already. We've kind of shown you all the different amps and the different paths and, and different things like that. We've talked about that. And what I've said is you can pick a random preset to tweak. That's exactly what I did. Picked a random preset, random preset, started tweaking things, getting an idea of how the flow was laid out. It's really intuitive once you get used to it. When I first saw these lines and all these different blocks and everything, I thought, what a mess. How am I ever going to understand this? But really, you're modifying a signal path. That's all that is, okay? Different effects, different amps, different blocks on a path, just like you, an effects chain, basically is all that is, okay? I've already shown you how, you know, to set up different presets and things like that. I'll probably do another video as well on how I created my own signature tone. I did that a little bit on the second uh, Line 6 video I did called Cloned Tones. That was um, uh, about a week or two ago. Check that on the playlist of the Line 6 videos that I have here, the Helix LT. But that's um, a video that I was kind of showing you how to set it up. I, I really need to, now that I understand a little bit more how it works, need to make another update video on that. Plus, I've already kind of settled on what the tone is gonna be. So I'll be probably doing a video on that as well to show you how I set it up, kind of my thought process as well on that. And hopefully very soon I'll be making my own set list templates available or my own presets available. Now I showed you how to use the templates function. There was a lot more templates in there than what I was telling you about. They have templates on how to control your own DAW using Reaper or whatever. Any MIDI function that your DAW can recognize, the Helix can do. It can be a control surface for you. There's no need to purchase a separate control surface. That's amazing in itself. You can control YouTube videos. They have a preset in the templates where you can control YouTube videos as you're watching them. Okay, so it's amazing. Definitely dive into those templates in the preset. You click the preset button, scroll all the way down to the templates folder, and start messing with some of those. Get an idea for what they for, what they have. I think they even have a four cable method one. So they make it really easy to kind of get started. But like I said, I'm gonna to try to get some of my presets up as I build them so that they can be available to you if you want to download and try those. That's going to wrap it up for me today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, subscribe, click the bell notification, and check the description below for any included links. Hope you enjoyed this. Leave me some comments below. That is very important, folks, so that it lets me know if I'm doing a good job. Trying my best here to do that. Try not to ramble a lot. Trying to give you solid information on how to use this unit. I really would appreciate your feedback on that. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video, whatever that may be. God bless and remember, keep creating.